want to make sure I'm talking to several. It's like paparazzi. I don't know who sings that song, but anyway. So, um, all right. So, welcome back, Facebook. So, I apologize for you having to um, to miss a part of it. You can go back if you don't follow us on Instagram. That way, you can follow us on there and you can see. Um, what we just went over. So I'm just going over a little bit about ceruzing, C-E-R-U-S-I-N-G. -E and so this particular finish on this cabinet door has been ceruzed with a glaze. So um, here's the before. This is in our vintage affliction. And then here's the after. Now, of course, with the one-step paint, you don't have to sand strip or seal it. You don't have to prime it either. You can paint directly on top of your kitchen cabinets. Um, to be able to get a look like this. So the fun thing is, is that you just want to make sure um, in doing this that you are choosing the right color that you want to be able to do. On this one, we actually did it in Bauhaus Buff, a glaze. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. This can also be called whitewashing. Some people call it pickling. Some people call it ceruzing. Um, all of those words are applicable and appropriate. Um, if you're working on wood, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, how to be able to work with regular stained wood and be able to get a beautiful liming look. So there, um, while we are saying a lot of different words, they can kind of mean the same, um, and it is more of a whitewashed, glazed effect over an existing color. All right, so there again, we have our, our vintage affliction and our one-step paint that we just painted on top of our cabinet door. And I'm gonna take a little bit of glazed over, if you can see this. This is a medium. Basically, it allows you to be able to mix with a one-step paint. All this is water-based. It doesn't have any VOCs, which is a, um, it's, it has a chemical term. It basically is the VOCs of things that are harmful um, to our bodies. And it's a chemical composition, which you don't have to worry about with the one-step paint or the glazed over. Um, there are no VOCs, so all of this is safe to be able to use um, in children's rooms, on baby furniture, nursery furniture. All right, so when I am making up a glaze to be able to create um, this ceruzing effect on here, I'm going to use three parts. So it's one part glaze, one part paint, and one part water. Just as simple as that. It's in thirds. So I'm, here's my one part glaze. I'm going to just take a little bit of the one step paint and mix it up and then here's my water so this is just regular tap water it doesn't have to be warm and I'm gonna mix that up together so this just makes like a glaze that you can use um, over any surface I'm using the vintage affliction today but you could very easily do this over a gray color you can do this over black you can use it over a lot of different colors I do prefer that you use it over the one step paint just strictly because it's um, it will absorb well into it. The one-step paint is a calcium carbonate, meaning chalk. It has chalk in it, and it's a beautiful matte finish, which that way it will absorb nicely into it. All right, so I've mixed my glaze up really nicely. Now, you want to have, when you're glazing, you want to use two brushes. You're going to have the brush that you're going to apply it with, and then you want to have the brush that you're going to offload it. So this is a positive brush, and this is a negative brush. So here comes the teacher in me again. I want, as you tune in to these Finish Fridays, is that we're going to build your repertoire of finishes. You're going to understand where things come from, where did that terminology come from, and then that way there's an opportunity for you to be able to experience and make samples. If you'll notice again with these cabinet doors, I'll go to Habitat. I'll get uh, cabinet doors for like a dollar. Um, and that way I'll paint them and then I'll, I'll experiment on them. Don't experiment on your furniture um, or your cabinets. I want you to be able to practice on pieces of wood, small pieces like this. All right, so here is a chip brush. This is the um, Amy Howard at Home chip brush. I'm going to load it up just a little bit. Now this is uh, kind of thin, so you want to make sure that how you're working with it. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. And now you're going to start in the upper left-hand corner and you're going to apply it everywhere. You want to work fairly quickly. We talk about open time. Open time is the amount of time you've got to be able to work on this before it starts to dry. Now you look, I loaded up enough glaze on here that I could get over the entire door. 
now I'm going to come back. So this was my positive tool. This had my glaze on it. I'm going to set that aside. And now I've got a negative tool. This is going to pull it away. At the same time, it's going to create almost a striation, a strie effect. So work your way horizontally. Now I'm going to go vertical and across again. And look how I've got a rag in my hand. See how I'm constantly offloading my brush onto my rag. So that way my brush doesn't get loaded up with paint because if it does, then that way it's gonna become a positive tool. Now, we're live, guys, so if you have a question that you want me to answer, there's a great way for you to be able to just ask, and I'm gonna be able to answer it for you. Tamara said, this is one of my all-time favorite finishes. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> it is mine, too. It's so elegant. It can be so pretty. It's timeless. But look, I want you to notice, too, that um, I'm working fairly fast. I'm not using a rag. I'm not bringing a rag in here. I want to make sure that I stay with my brush. And look how I'm going to stay fairly light touched about this. I'm just barely laying it down because that way I want to finesse it. Now, because of time, I'm not going to continue to work on this. I want to be able to show you how to be able to do the same thing to brick but I wanted to do enough here so you could see how pretty that is. I just want to make sure that I come back in and get my corners soft. I love this. Love, love, love. What a beautiful finish. Um, and there you can see on this piece that we've done earlier what it looks like. Now, you know, the other great thing about this, if you don't want to, you don't have to seal this. You don't have to put wax on it. Um, the glazing liquid, the glazed over, and the paint have sealed it in here. So you can scrub this, you can wipe it. You don't have, if you get spaghetti sauce on it, all you have to do is wipe that off and it's gonna be fine. All right, so the other fun thing is, I wanna show you, even on raw wood, so this is actually some oak flooring. This is where you might call it pickling. The same process that we used of mixing up this glaze, which is one part water, one part glazed over, and one part Bauhaus buff one step paint, you can brush it directly on to raw wood, and you know what that does? That creates almost a pickling effect. Look at this, so this is raw oak. I'm just brushing this in over here, and I'm gonna finesse it just a little bit. It's gonna soak down into the grain, and then I'm just gonna take a rag and wipe that off. Look at that, look at that, isn't that beautiful? So you've got just a very simple oak finish. Now, oak has a real heavy grain to it. This isn't gonna be as um, great on things like pine or birch because there's not a lot of grain. But if you're working with an oak, especially oak floors, what a gorgeous, gorgeous finish. So if you are using this um, idea of pickling on floors, you do wanna make sure you seal it with a matte sealer. Um, Someone uh, asked, do you prefer this over lining wax or does it depend on the piece? It's going to depend on the piece. That's a great question. Um, and that's why in different scenarios, depending on what surface we're using, um, that's going to depend on what product we need to use. So the wax is going to give you a great hardy finish. I'm going to show you that um, over maybe a piece of furniture. But on a floor, I would probably prefer um, to go this direction. Um, with making the glaze and then make sure that it's sealed. It's going to be a lot hardier and a lot prettier um, as far as wearing. Now, I want you to see, if you can see half and half, this is where I used this glaze earlier and I let it dry. Um, and I came back with my vintage wood um, Mind Your Own Beeswax and I put it on fairly generously. You can see kind of the difference in the color. And then I can come back and buff it to where it has a really pretty sheen to it. It's important that you use a natural beeswax with some carnauba in it. Carnauba um, is actually a wax that we use on bowling alleys. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna put that aside. I wanna show you really quickly um, about the wax. So the question that someone had, can you use wax too? The liming wax and the ceruzing wax are pretty much the same chemical composition. Um, they have calcium carbonate in it. Calcium carbonate is chalk. So we have created 
Um, in our Amy Howard at Home Vintage Wood, we have a ceruzine wax that has chalk in it and it's mixed with carnauba wax as well as natural beeswax. So you can very easily come back on top of a stained finish as well as a painted finish and create a beautiful surface. Now let me show you. I'm always work with a little piece of cardboard and I'm gonna pour out just a little bit of this vintage wood and I'm gonna load up my brush. There again, I work with chip brushes. It's best not to work with synthetic brushes when you're doing this. Um, these chip brushes are gonna hold on to it a lot better. So I'm going to um, load this up. I'm gonna leave a little bit showing here. I want you to see what a major transformation this is. So I'm, I'm not really worried about how I'm putting it on. I do wanna make sure that I've got pretty good coverage. Now remember, I'm live. This, we're in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Central Standard Time. So if you have a question, please feel free to ask it and I love being able to answer it for you. All right, if you love Finish Friday, if this is a great way for you to be able to learn how to rescue and restore your furniture, be sure and um, shout us out with some hearts, um, some love. We wanna be doing this to make sure that uh, we're continuing to help you learn how to um, rescue some of the 25 million tons of furniture that we throw away in this country every year um, and make your home more beautiful. All right, so look how I've just applied this ceruzine wax onto my board and I'm gonna come back with some 4 aught steel wool and I'm just going to, look at this, I'm pulling it through just a little bit, I'm just kind of buffing it. I can let it dry a little bit longer if I want to and I can have it a little heavier if I want to. Look at that. Do you, oh, isn't that beautiful? I love that. A lot of times, too, I'll try to go against the grain and get it down in there. Look at the difference. Can you see, here's the before of my wood that's just raw with some of the stain in there and then coming back with the ceruzine wax. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous finish. Come over to this piece over here. Can you, can the camera just kind of glance over here really quickly? I want them to see this. This is a chest that I got at a, an antique shop here in Memphis. Um, it is solid oak, but I wanted you to see how gorgeous getting the ceruzine wax into this finish, how beautiful it is, and how it looks like a very expensive furniture cabinet finish. Um, love that, and it's so easy to do. It's simply using um, the ceruzine wax um, on top of the, um, the stained finish. All right, yes, there's a question. Sherry asks, is there any issue with pieces of the steel wool getting in the wax? There shouldn't be. If you use, it's a great question, Sherry. The thing is, there shouldn't be. If you are working with a 4 aught steel wool, it's really tight. 4 aught is a much finer steel wool. Um, and it, you know, some people, um, they may say, well, it may, the, the steel wool might hurt their hands. It, it's very um, it's very fine and easy to work with. I use it almost like a rag to be able to buff. So you shouldn't have any problem with pieces of it coming out. And if you want to, a lot of times I'll just come back and buff it, um, you know, with a lint-free rag, just to be able to get a really pretty sheen on that. Love that. I mean, it's that's just amazing. Um, all right. So and last but not least, I want to just be able to show you. Um, another technique that you can do on brick. A lot of people have brick floors, they have uh, brick um, backsplashes, they'll have brick areas in their kitchens, or you may even have a fireplace surround or the outside of your house. One great thing about the, um, the Amy Howard at Home One Step Paint is the fact that you do not have to seal it. Unlike a lot of chalk-based paints, they have to be sealed or the pigmentation will come out. On the Rescue Restore paint, it will adhere to brick, glass, concrete, metal, melamine, furniture, of course, even hardware. The resiliency that it has to even be used outdoors is amazing. So um, you can mix up a glaze with the One Step Paint and use it on your brick. You can use it outside as well as um, indoors on maybe your brick surround. So I'm going to take a um, I'm going to take a natural seawall sponge, 
and I'm going to take a little bit of water. Of course, you want to make sure that you put it back into some water. That's the natural state uh, that this seawool sponge is because they come from the ocean. And I just like working with seawool sponges. They're very organic looking, very natural. I don't like working with synthetic sponges um, because they're usually in squares and they're, they're harder to work with. So I'm just going to come back with the glaze. Remember the glaze that we made was one part water, one part um, glazed over, and one part the, um, the one-step paint. And I'm going to dip my sponge down in here like this. And usually, just like with my wax, I'm always offloading. And then you can come back on top of your brick like this, and you're just kind of sponging it in. I prefer not to brush it on, but that's just my preference. If you want to, you can. Because the cool thing about it is, if you're working on a fireplace surround, you want to make sure that you clean it because there's probably soot, so you want to use our clean slate and clean that. And then just come back and sponge on your glaze. You know, the cool thing is, you don't have to do anything after this. You don't have to seal it. You don't have to wax it. Nothing. And there's one thing that I love about um, painted brick is that I like it to look old and mottled and, um, and natural looking and not look like it's got a plastic coating of paint on it. So this is a very easy technique to be able to use with the same thing uh, that we used on our kitchen cabinet doors. Just take a glance right over here of these um, bricks that I painted earlier. See how they're kind of modeled? By doing it with a natural seawall sponge, you're gonna get that modeling and that beautiful texture in it where if you were working with a regular paint, it's gonna have a tendency to look more opaque and really covered up. This is much prettier um, much more of, a, of a, an aesthetic that is very um, beautiful for an interior. So hopefully today this gave you a little bit of an exposure to what our finishing school, our Finish Friday is going to be like. I'm going to be teaching you how to do old world Toscana finishes, how to be able to um, antique things, how to work with raw wood and make it look like it's 200 years old. Lots of exciting things planned for you, but hopefully today this gave you an idea about ceruzing, liming, glazing, how to get a whitewashed pickled look. It's very easy. So now it's your turn to go enjoy the bragging rights. Be sure and share your before and afters with us too, guys. Bye. See you next Friday.